got the sword and the spirit, the shield of faith, the belt of truth around my waist. When I feel weak, you make me strong, never back down. I got my God suit on.
Hello there, my name's Sam and I'm the minister here at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. You're joining us for In Touch. Thank you for choosing to be with us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are so welcome. I pray that by the power of the Spirit, you would know the presence of Almighty God with you as you watch, and also your pre the presence of your sisters and brothers from Melton Mowbray Baptist Church and all over the country and even the world. You are so welcome. Before we start with some prayers of praise, a psalm and a song, I thought it might be nice to bring to God our week. I know that we're all coming from different spaces with different emotions, different feelings, different thoughts. And all of that's probably a jumble in your head. It's certainly a big, messy jumble in mine. So as we come to worship God together as a community, why don't we take a moment to hand that jumble over to God? And once we've handed that jumble over, I will lead us through presenting our open hands to God with nothing in them and inviting God to speak to us. So in this next 30 seconds, I invite you to place your hands in front of you and imagine that you're holding all of the mess, the jumble, the joy, the sorrow of the last week. And over the next 30 seconds, I want you to go through a process of saying, God, I give this to you. Let's do that together, shall we? Having taken time to hand that over to God, we now realise that our hands are empty. Open your hands wherever you are and look at them. Recognise that you come to God with nothing in your hands. And over this next 30 seconds, I invite you, whilst breathing in and breathing out slowly, to say to God, my hands are open. Speak, I will listen. Those words again. My hands are open. Speak, I will listen. Let's breathe together. Say those words in our head over the next 30 seconds. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you will be present with us throughout all of this morning's In Touch. Might we have open hands and open ears ready to receive what God has to say to us this morning. And might we have malleable hearts that would be moulded by the words, songs, prayers and the igniting of the Holy Spirit that we experience today. We ask that in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to hand over to one of our church leaders now and a friend of mine, Andy, who's going to launch us into our worship this morning with some prayers, a psalm, and he'll introduce our first song. Andy, take it away. Let's pray together. And I invite you to join in with me. When I say the words, let us praise his name, you respond, we praise his holy name. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. The Lord is good and the Lord is holy. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. The Lord is great and the Lord is sovereign. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. The Lord is faithful and the Lord is compassionate. Let us praise his name. 
we praise his holy name. The Lord is Saviour and the Lord is loving. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. The Lord has died and the Lord has risen. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. The Lord is here and the Lord is with us. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. The Lord who came is the Lord who is coming. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. The Lord has called us and the Lord will send us. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. The Lord is good and the Lord is holy. Let us praise his name. We praise his holy name. Amen. And this is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him for his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourines and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now we're going to sing together and we're going to worship as we sing the song, God, I look to you, which has that refrain, I will love the Lord my God. Wisdom. 
Thank you, Amy and Rob, for leading us in that beautiful song of praise. In the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about worship, about the proper kind of worship, the worship that God desires, the worship that will anoint the very heart of God. And as I was thinking and praying about how I was going to continue talking about that with you all this week, I had a real sense that God was saying, tell them why we worship. Remind yourself and your sisters and brothers why you worship. Because of course, worship doesn't spring out of nowhere. It is in fact in response to what God has done, what God is doing and what God will do for us. We have good reason to worship. And today we're going to look at three foundational reasons why we worship God. Three foundational reasons to worship. The first, God made us. He created us. He was the one who formed me and formed you. Two, God sustains us. He gives us what we need to survive and to live and to thrive. And three, God saved us. He made us part of his family, turned us from enemies to beloved daughters and sons. Three foundational reasons to worship. And I'm so excited to just be spending a a session with, with us all and a whole in touch, just talking about why God is so wonderful and why he deserves our praise. The first one we're going to look at is God made us, God created us. And I've asked my friend and yours, Claire, to tell us about that. So Claire, I'm handing over to you. Thank you for doing this. Please take it away. Hello. Today, we're thinking about why we worship God. And one of the reasons that we worship God is because of all the things he created and because he made us. And I'm going to read a story about that now. It's called It's All Good, and it's from the Rhyming Bible by Bob Hartman. There was nothing at first. There was nothing but God. No planets, no mountains, no chickens, no cod. Then God said the word, and like that, there was light. The light he called day, and the dark he called night. Then God said water, and water there was the waters below and the waters above and just like a canopy way up high the bright baby blue and the white cloudy sky and when god said gather the waters below washed into seas with a tumbling flow and left behind dry land the dark fertile earth where flowers and trees and fruit came to birth god spoke into being the sun stars and moon from morning and evening and night time and noon, light for the darkness and light for the day, to mark off the seasons as years pass away. Now fill up the oceans, said God, gurgling, fish! And fin, tail and tentacle answered his wish. And when he cried, bird, a skyfall replied with a squawk and a swoop and a duck and a dive. When God roared their names, the wild beasts appeared. Now cattle, said God, Now sheep to be sheared. Now animals big. Now animals small. Now creatures who slither and skitter and crawl. And then with a smile, God said, women and men, made in my image, made to be friends, made to make babies, sweet boys and girls, made to take care of my beautiful world. And when he had finished, As most artists should, God looked at his work and he said, it's all good. And when he had finished, as most artists do, he rested and then blessed that day of rest too. God made each one of us, like the story says. And um, King David, who we read about in the Bible, wrote lots of songs and poems and one of them talks a little bit about how God made each one of us. I'm just going to read a little bit from the Barnabas Children's Bible. Psalm 139 says this, 
You are the one who put me together inside my mother's body. And I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvellous. Nothing about me is hidden from you. I was secretly woven together deep in the earth below, but with your own eyes you saw my body being formed. Even before I was written, you had written in your book everything I would do. I'm going to pray a prayer that you might like to join in with, praising God for his creation. Father God, we thank you for all the things that you have created, things that we can see and hear and touch and taste and smell. We thank you for your amazing creation. We thank you for the snow we've enjoyed this week and for the birds and animals that we can see outside. And we also want to thank you that you created each one of us. I thank you that you made me and that I am special. Thank you that you care for each of us and you made us each different. Lord, you are amazing. Amen. Those pandas are so cheeky, but they're right. Our God is so awesome. He is worthy of a big, wide, wow, wow, is God awesome. 
And wasn't it amazing to hear of how he created us? It's only right that we give the one who made us worship and praise. But not only did God create us, not only has he makes us, he sustains us, he gives us what we need to live, thrive and survive. I've asked my dear friend and your friend, Richard, to think about what it means for God to sustain us. Richard, thank you for doing this. Please tell us more. So God is the creator, but he is also the sustainer. He also sustains his world and us in it. God spoke the word and humans into existence and he upholds the world by his power. Originally, he brought the world into being and his powerful word sustains life, holds matter together and maintains the universe in proper order. Colossians 1 and 17 tells us he is before all things and in him all things hold together. God is not only the creator of the world, he's also its sustainer. In him, everything is held together, protected and prevented from disintegrating into chaos. But hey, perhaps at the moment it doesn't much feel like that to you. Over the last year we could think that our world has done just that, descended into chaos. And I think that if you look at the situation we're in through the lens of worldly powers, it has. Which just shows us the fragility of worldly powers and the fragility of humankind. So we need to remind ourselves of who is in charge here. Who's the real boss? Who do we look to for leadership, guidance and hope? God is the sustainer. He guides the world to its appointed future, his future, his kingdom on earth. This is our sure and certain hope which sustains us. Which is great, and it is. But how does that play out for us day to day? Acts 17 and 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being. The knowledge, the hope, the certainty of what is to come is crucial to sustaining our faith. But we also need some help along the way. In our teaching recently, we've, we've been reminded that we live out a little of God's kingdom now, but we also have to face the challenge of living in the world as it is now. And that can be hard. But God isn't some distant being leaving us to it. We are his offspring. We are children of God. And the sustaining of our lives is by a God who knows us personally and who we can know. God is so very near and very knowable. If you like, we live in his environment by the presence of the Holy Spirit, we can operate in his neighbourhood and he will never fail his followers. God has been, is and ever will be our powerful and faithful protector. Isaiah 46 and 4 says, Even to your old age and uh, grey hairs, I am he, I am he who sustains you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. What a wonderful picture that is. God's love is so enduring that he will care for us throughout our lifetime. And of course, even through death. From the womb to the tomb, he knows us. He cares for us. He carries us in arms of power and love. We are in the constant care of his kind providence. Our spiritual life is sustained by his grace, just as our natural life is borne up by his care. So God is in charge and sustains his world. He cares for us and sustains us throughout our lifetimes. But also he nourishes us, gives us sustenance, strength and power. Jesus tells the woman at the well that whoever drinks of his blessings will never thirst again. Later he tells the Pharisees he's come to give life to the full. And Paul prays that the Colossians will be strengthened with all power that they may have endurance and patience. The gift that Jesus describes is a perpetual spring, a, 
a bubbling fountain within us which suggests uh, an abundance of life that's available to us and accessible to us. Blessings that nourish and strengthen us eternally. Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it abundantly. We receive life the moment we accept him as our saviour and the more we turn ourselves over to the Holy Spirit, the more we receive the blessings he intended for us. So here I think we see our God the sustainer not only about maintenance and care but also about growth and development. It's hard for us to comprehend that the power of God is also available to us. The Christian life cannot be lived by human energy alone. It requires supernatural strength and that is available to us as believers so that we can fulfil God's mission to the world. It is God's power that enables believers to endure, to be patient, to hold on to and to grow in faith and to work for him. And to be greatly blessed, abundantly blessed, as we do so. So let's pray together. Living, loving God, we worship you as our sustainer. We praise you that you uphold this world by your power. We praise you that you hold the future of our world in your hands and that you are our perfect and eternal hope. We worship you as our caring, loving Father who protects and provides for us all the days of our life, our eternal sustainer. And we worship you as provider of the strength and power that we need as we seek your kingdom on earth. Heavenly Father, we worship you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Richard. So by this point and in touch, you have been introduced to two incredible reasons to worship. Phenomenal reasons to worship. That God made us and that God sustains us, gives us everything we need to live, thrive and survive. They are massive reasons to worship. It is right that we worship the one who gives us life and it is right the one, that we worship the one who continues to keep us going. That should be reason enough for the entirety of our lives to be filled and drenched with worship, for each breath to be an act of worship, each act, each thought, each word, each deed. It should be. But it isn't, is it? It's not enough. If you look into Genesis 2 and 3, you'll find out it wasn't enough at the beginning of time when we were created. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden had been made by God and they were being sustained by his goodness. And he asked them as an act of worship to obey him, not to eat the fruit from a certain tree, but they were tempted and they did it. And look, you and I, we actually do know what's right and wrong. We know it in our guts, but we don't do it all the time. We hurt people. We think poorly of people. We are violent. We consider violence. We use words as arrows. Even the people who we love, we can't love perfectly, can we? Because the people we love the most are the ones we hurt the most. Often accidentally, but sometimes, let's be honest, deliberately. And yet we know God created us, he sustains us, but it's not enough. And that brings us on to our third reason to worship. And that reason is because God saved us. You see... God creating us and sustaining us should have been enough for us to live a life that was worthy of one of his creators, but creations, but it wasn't. <coughs> it wasn't. We are rebellious in nature. We did not manage to make the entirety 
of human existence an act of worship. And so we fell away from that perfect creation. We fell away from that perfect sustenance and life became hard. We sinned. We sinned. And each of us sins. And it meant that we were separated from God, the one who created us and the one who still sustained us. We were separated from him, broken apart. My favourite verse in the Bible is John 3.16. It goes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It is a beautiful verse because it recognises that without Jesus Christ we would perish but with him we gain eternal life. We gain daughtership, sonship. We become children of God. Let me explain it like this. Whilst ever we were going our own way, there was only one place that we were heading. And that was to destruction. That was to perish. Because God is holy and he cannot have his holiness ruined by people like you and me. But God loved us so much that he couldn't live with that situation. And so, just over 2,000 years ago, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, God himself. God himself became a human being. And in the incarnation, which is when God becomes a human being, he redeemed human nature. The sinfulness that is there from, from when we first sinned in the Garden of Eden. Then he lived a life demonstrating what it is to live the perfect life of worship. Never to sin, never to do wrong. Always living within God's perfect best, always obeying God. He, he lived that life and he, he showed us what it is to live a life of perfect worship to almighty God. And then when he was 33 years old... The only perfect human being that has ever lived was executed after a sham trial. And he died on a cross made of wood. And in dying, he became the sacrifice that paid for the sins that you and I have indulged in throughout our lives. He took the punishment of God. He perished in our place. He died in our place so that we might be for forgiven from our sins. And then three days later, he rose from the grave, demonstrating that he had defeated evil, that he had defeated sin, and that once and for all he had defeated death, showing us that we might have eternal life with him and the Father when he returns. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Each of us have turned away from God. Each of us have turned away from the one who created us, the one who sustains us, and it hurt him dearly. But then he came and he died in our place so that we could come back. He saved us from perishing. He saved us from the punishment that was due to us because of our sinfulness. And in that moment, we were clothed in righteousness. We were clothed in the holiness of Jesus himself. We were made beloved children of God and welcomed into his family. And we can look forward with a certain hope that one day Christ will return. He will judge the living and the dead and we will not be found wanting, but will be involved in the recreation of the new earth and the new heaven. And we will live with our father here in this transformed world. This morning, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, if you haven't accepted 
this truth that I have just told you that God came and God saved you. But something is stirring inside you. You're going, yeah, I I have ignored the one who created me and sustained me. I have not lived a life that is worthy of worshipping him. And I want to. And I want to have a relationship with him. Then let me tell you, you can. Because of what Jesus did, you can too be saved. Everyone at home right now, if you already knew this, and you already are saved, and you've already known Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, I, I invite you to join in with this prayer. If, if that's not you, but you want to, you want to have a relationship with, with God Almighty, then I invite you to join in with this prayer. And if that's you, please write in the comments, that is me. Please get in touch with us after this service so that we can help, support and love you. God loves you so much that he does not want to see you perish. Instead, he died in your place so that he could share his eternal life with you from today and into eternity. That is a reason to worship. Pray with me. I invite you now. Loving Father God, we thank you for what Jesus has done for us. We thank you that even though we have rebelled against you, you still loved us. And we thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place and to offer us eternal life. In this moment, we say to you, Lord, that we are sorry for the sinful lives that we have. And we commit to turn away from them with the help of Jesus Christ from this point forward. To accept his salvation and allow the Holy Spirit to transform us from within. We give you our lives as an act of worship. And we thank you that you have not allowed us to perish, but in Christ have given us eternal life. We are yours. Guide us in your ways everlasting. Amen. As I say, If you prayed that with me for the first time, then do get in touch. I want to pray with you. I want to chat with you. I I want to get you included in some of our small groups. But before we do any of that, why don't we sing in worship to the God who made us, sustains us, and most importantly, the God who saves us. And the world will see our God saves. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Saviour, to fall on your grace In the name of the Father In the name of the Son In the name of the Spirit Lord, we come We gather together To lift up your name To call on our Saviour To fall on your grace Hear the joyful sound of our offering As your saints bow down, as your people sing We will rise with you, lifted on your wings And the world will see that our God saves Our God saves 
God saves. Amen. One last thing that I wanted to say to everyone is some of you might be watching this and thinking, do you know what? I've heard that. I've actually moved on before, beyond that original message of God saving us. And I just want to say to you this morning, you can never, ever move beyond that message. If that message does not undergird everything that you do, everything that you are, let me tell you that maturity is beyond you because you need to know the good news that Jesus Christ has saved you. And we need to return to that narrative, that story, that truth all the time if we wish to be true worshippers of God, if we wish to serve God in ways that bring him honour, glory and praise. This morning, have as your primary identity a person who has been saved through the life-saving work of Jesus Christ. Let's come now to God in prayer. Loving Father God, we thank you that you are a God who is worthy of our worship, that you give us reason upon reason for worship. But this morning, we thank you and we praise you. We worship you because you have made us uniquely individually you have put us together you have formed us in our mother's womb and for that we give you honor worship and praise 
This morning we worship, we thank you, we praise you because you sustain us. You give us the food that we need. You give us the air that we breathe. You give us the money, the jobs, everything that we need to survive is a gift of grace from you. And we thank you and worship and praise you. And this morning we thank you, we worship you, we praise you that we are saved through the life-saving work of Jesus Christ, your son. We praise you for Jesus. We praise you for Jesus as an example. We praise you for Jesus as a sacrifice. We praise you for Jesus as the one who shows us the route to eternal life. And we praise you for Jesus who is now our Lord and Saviour. Lord, we praise you and we thank you because you are a good, good God and you give us untold reasons to worship. Let's continue now in prayer for our world. Lord, we pray for your world, gripped in the suffering caused by the coronavirus pandemic, gripped in the suffering of unfairly divided resources, gripped in the suffering of climate change caused catastrophe. Lord, have mercy on your world, we pray. Give comfort and solace, particularly to the least, the last and the lost. May they know your comfort and presence of peace with them. Today, we pray particularly for those working in healthcare all over the globe. Lord, for doctors, nurses, administrative staff, we pray a blessing. May they be sustained and given all they need, all the good gifts they need to do the work that you have laid before them. We pray also this morning for chaplains, supporting those who support the ill, supporting the ill themselves. Lord, we pray your peace as they deal with the traumas they have seen and they aid others to walk through the traumas they are experiencing. Lord, have mercy on them and bless them with your grace, we pray. As churches together in our town of Melton Mowbray, we are bringing before God each other's churches. And today we are especially praying for our brothers and sisters in the Methodist Church. We pray for Reverend James Skinner, the Superintendent Minister, and for Deacon Alison McCauley, and for all the local preachers as they seek to support and oversee the Methodist circuit, with its two town churches, Sage Cross and Sandy Lane, and its number of outlying village churches. Give to all strength and endurance during this time of not being able to gather together. But in spite of this, may each individual and each congregation continue to know and experience the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit through all who minister to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for our road, Lord Jesus. Thank you for bringing us to live here. Thank you for the people that live here who were made in your image, loved by you, Father God. I pray for open minds and hearts for the people who live here, for a spirit of revelation of who you are. I pray blessing on them, on their jobs, their families, their health and their relationships. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would hover here on this road and bring protection. I pray that we and the other God followers who live on this road would be like a beacon of light, a city on a hill, here to shine your love. Help us to be encouragers and bringers of hope. May our open and welcoming display of kindness, generosity and in time hospitality 
make it a true blessing for the people who live on our road to live near us. May we partner with you so that our road becomes a place of worship, hope, and where hearts find their true hope. In Jesus' name, amen. And I invite you now to go to your window and pray for 60 seconds for the people who live on your road. Loving Father, hear our prayers, those spoken, those held within our hearts. Hear them and answer, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Like wildfire.
So that brings us to the end of In Touch this morning. I want to really thank you for joining us today. You'll find us here next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Same place, same time, YouTube for next week's In Touch. If you would like to get in touch with me after what I've said this morning, after the prayer that you've prayed this morning, please do. My email address is sam at mmbc org.uk and that email address will come up on one of our notice slides after I've just stopped speaking. Now, I'd love to pray with you, I'd love to speak with you and I'd love to introduce you more properly to the wonderful community that is Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. Well, until I see you again, I'll miss you, but God will be with you. I love you, but he loves you more. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, I almost forgot. Rose, this is for you. You're just too good to be true. I can't take my eyes off of you. You be like heaven to touch. I want to hold you so much At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive You're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you Let's go to the ba ba bas everyone ba da ba da ba da 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 ba da da ba da ba I love you, baby, and if it's quite all right, I love you, baby. To all those lonely nights, I love you, baby. Trust in me when I say, oh, pretty baby, don't let me down, I pray. Oh, pretty baby, now that I've found you, stay and let me love you, baby. <laughs> Let me love you. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. See you next week. So uh, as we come to worship, I've got a couple of songs which um, focus on uh, on the character of God and um, what he's like. Uh, a long time ago, I saw these two words put together to describe uh, Jesus, meekness and uh, majesty, all that we see about God uh, in the person of Jesus Christ. and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility, and washes our feet. Oh, what a 
mystery, meekness and majesty, bow down and worship, for this is your God, this is your pure radiance perfect in innocence yet learns obedience to death on a cross suffering to give us life conquering through sacrifice and as they crucify praise Father forgive oh what a mystery meekness and majesty Bow down and worship For this is your God This is your God Wisdom unsearchable God the invisible Love indestructible in frailty appears. Lord of infinity, stooping so tenderly, lifts our humanity to the heights of his throne. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty, bow down and is your God. This is your God. This is your God. From heaven you came, helpless babe Entered our world, your glory veiled Not to be served, but to serve And give your life that we might live this is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. There in the garden of tears My heavy load he chose to bear His heart with sorrow was torn Yet not my will but yours he stayed our God the servant king he calls us now to follow him to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant Come see his hands and his feet The scars that speak of sacrifice 
Hands that flung stars into space Two cruel nails surrenders This is our God, the servant king he calls us now to follow him To bring our lives as a daily offering Of worship to the servant king So let us learn how to serve and in our lives and throne him each other's needs to prefer for it is Christ with service our God this is our God the servant he calls us now to follow Him To bring our lives as a daily offering Of worship to the Servant King
such love Such love Stilling my restlessness Such love Filling my emptiness Such love Showing me holiness Oh, Jesus Such love Such love Springs from eternity Such love Streaming through history, such love, fountain of life to me, oh Jesus, such love, oh Jesus. Such love, oh, such love. I receive your love, I receive your. You know, it's rightly said that uh, we are blessed to be a blessing. And um, the whole point of following Jesus is that the life of Christ in us just gets to take up more and more space and overflows out of us into the world uh, around us. And um, this is a prayer. Uh, it's called Beauty for Brokenness, also God of the Poor. Uh, and there's beauty for our own brokenness, but there's beauty for the brokenness of the world in Christ as his life in us overflows around us. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile lives. Cures for their ills Work for the craftsmen Trade for their skills Land for the disposed Rights for the weak Voices to plead the cause Of those who can't speak God of the poor Friend of the weak Give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Refuge from cruel wars, havens from fear. Cities for sanctuary, freedoms to share. Peace to the killing fields, scorched earth to green. Christ for the bitterness, his cross for the pain. God of the poor. 
Give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Rest for the ravaged earth, oceans and streams, plundered and poisoned, a future of dreams. Lord, in thy madness, carelessness, grief, make us content with the things that we need. God of the poor, Friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, it is full like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Lighten our darkness. Breathe on this flame Until your justice burns brightly again Until the nations learn of your ways Seek your salvation and bring you their praise God of the poor, friend of the weak Give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark.